SOT84, this is the specification we use for determining our aggregate specific gravity of our fine aggregates. And we'll also use this test to determine the absorption of our fine aggregates also. The equipment needed for this test is, well, we have to have our fine aggregate sample. We have to have the cone and tamp because we'll be determining the SSD weight of our aggregate. And then we'll also have to have a pycnometer here that will put our SSD sample in and remove the air to determine what our weight underwater may be uh, for our fine area sample. And then finally, we'd get the dry weight. So those are the three weights needed to determine the specific gravities of our fine areas. So ASHTO T84, we have to have our sample. We have to soak it in water for 15 to 19 hours. That is just the same as we do for coarse aggregates. But for a fine aggregate sample, we don't actually have to cover the sample under water. We just have to make sure we have at least 6% moisture in our sample while it soaks. The easiest way to do that, that we have found, is to take a Ziploc bag, put your aggregate sample in, add your 6% water, take your hands and you can just move it around and your fine area sample will soak up that water. Let it sit overnight for 15 to 19 hours. And then after that 15 to 19 hours is up, then this one we can actually begin the test. So we have soaked this sample here. I have it spread out on a pan. And now we want to dry this sample back till it gets to its SSD state. There are several different ways that you can dry your fine aggregates back. Depends on how much time you have. If you have all day, maybe you can let it air dry. I've seen labs take and place fans just uh, blowing a little air over the top of them to help them dry. Or as you see here, I've seen many people use hair dryers. Uh, what you want to keep in mind is if you do use a hair dryer or even if it's just drying with a fan, you want to come by periodically, stir your sample with a spatula or with your hand to make sure that it's dry and even. So you don't want to blow all your sample out of your pan. You want to keep your sample in the pan as much as possible. When using a hair dryer, it's always good to stand back a little bit from your sample, let the hot air flow evenly over your sample. What I tend to do is dry it for a few minutes and then we'll mix our sample back together to make sure everything is drying evenly. Now, I know this sample is not close to SSD yet. It still has uh, a good bit of moisture in there. One way to test to see if your sample is getting close to SSD, a lot of times if you take the palm of your hand and stick it to your sample, if it's really wet still, it'll all stick to your hand. So I would keep drying this a little bit more till I just have a few particles uh, sticking to my hand. So now we've dried the sample for a while, so let's check to see if we're at our SSD state. The way we do that is we have our cone and tamp. I'll clear out an area on the pan, place our cone, and now we'll fill it up with our aggregates. And you can just take your hands and just fill your cone up till it is overflowing. Once it's overflowing, I like to take my hand and kind of brush away the material that's on the outside. Because once I remove this cone, I want to see how our fine aggregates slump. So that's what we're looking for. So this is the tamp. We have to do 25 tamps on this material and it's very small increments that you move it. The specification says it's a five millimeter drop. So, and we'll go around the outside as we do this. So that's 25. And now I will remove my cone. And as we see here, our material is not slumping any. So this means we still have too much uh, moisture in our, in our material and it's not reached that SSD condition. What we would like to see is when I remove the cone off, we would like to see our fine aggregate material slump about halfway. And then that is what we would determine as our SSD condition. But for this sample, we actually need to dry it a little more.
So after a few more minutes of drying, we'll now check our SSD condition again. Fill our cone up with our aggregate sample. Take your temp, 25 drops at five millimeters. And that's what we would like to see with a slump. We have just about half our cone slump, so we would consider this material here at SSD condition. Now, since we're at SSD condition, the next step is to take your pycnometer. If you want to get our SSD weight, I'll go ahead and zero out this pycnometer. It's also good to put a little bit of water on the bottom. The reason being, if you have a fine area that has a lot of clay-like material in there, if you just dump the material in with no water, it tends to stick to the glass and it's hard to get out. So I add the water to the pycnometer and then I zero out. And we have to add 500 grams plus or minus half a gram of our SSD material. It's also good if you have a funnel that will help you get your sample into your pycnometer. So once we have 500 plus or minus half a gram of material in our pycnometer, that is our SSD weight. So I'll report it on our sheet as our saturated surface dry aggregate. So in this example, I'm at 500.3 grams. And now we'll add our distilled water. We wanna add enough to cover our fine aggregate sample in our pycnometer. You need to add enough water so your sample is completely covered, typically by an inch or two. And now, what we want to do is get the air bubbles out of our sample. We want to make sure that we have enough water in here that our sample doesn't break the surface of this water. And it's always good if you'll tip, tilt your pycnometer and shake it with your other hand. And we can see the bubbles as they come out that is air releasing from our sample. Because what we're trying to do is we want to get all the air out of our sample and then record the weight. So after we have shaken our sample, and typically this takes 10 to 15 minutes to make sure all our air bubbles are out of our sample, we now need to take our spectrometer and fill it up to the calibration mark because these pycnometers are calibrated with water to their calibration marks. And so we have a value for that. And then we can get a weight of our sample and water filled to the calibration mark and subtract those two. And that will give us our weight of what's considered our underwater aggregate or our pycnometer filled with water as it states on our worksheet here. So we'll fill our pycnometer to the calibration mark. Now with some material, like you see here, there's foam and bubbles that tend to rise. We want to get these out of the sample. So for this pycnometer here, my calibration mark is where my finger is. So I'm gonna add enough water to actually make that foam rise. There's a couple of different ways to get the foam. I've seen labs add what's called liquid aerosol or drop or two to help get rid of those bubbles. But an easier way too that will work, just get a paper towel and just stick it down your pycnometer. And you can roll it around and help get some of these bubbles out. So once we have gotten all the foam and bubbles out, I will continue to fill to the calibration mark with water. And we want to make sure the meniscus 
of our water level is at that calibration mark. And what your meniscus is, if you if you look at your water level, you can see the bub a bubble, and the bottom of this bubble is what we consider the meniscus. Let's add in a little more water. And get it to our calibration mark. And now we need to take this weight. Make sure my scale is zero out. Now this will give me my weight of my pycnometer filled with water and sample. And so I have recorded that weight and there's only one other weight we need to get and that's our dry weight. So the way I would get my dry weight is that I would take my sample and I would just pour it in a bowl. And you want a bowl wide enough like this one because you don't want to lose any of your sample. It's because we typically have to add water back to it. If it all doesn't come out. So once we have our sample rinsed out of our pycnometer and into the bowl here, we'll now take our sample We'll place it in an oven at 110 degrees Celsius, which is 230 degrees Fahrenheit, to dry this material back. It's good to take these and dry them back overnight. And then in the morning when you come in, we could take our sample out, let it cool, get the weight of our sample, and then we'll have the dry weight of our fine aggregate sample. And we'll have all the weights we need to calculate the specific gravities of our fine aggregates and the absorption of our fine aggregates.